name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Something that I always like to do is read about different myths that different cultures have. I, I find it very interesting to look at how different people throughout the world and throughout history have kind of viewed the world and how they, how they see things in the world. And there's a saint, an Orthodox saint, Justin Martyr, who wrote about myths, and he said that when you're looking at myths, and he's talking about the Greek myths, he says, even though this is not you know, our, our faith, and even though this is not our religion, nonetheless, we find that, that God has left hints of himself in the world that over time people have kind of picked up on. And so as you read myths from different cultures, you can see little bits of the gospel here and there, even though they don't have the whole thing necessarily. There's a very old Romanian myth that says that in the beginning of creation, the world was transparent. The world was crystal clear. You could look down into the earth and you could see straight through to the other side. It was just as clear as glass. And then this, this myth says that after Cain murdered his brother Abel, he covered over that transparency of the earth. He covered over the earth's surface so that he could hide his brother Abel's body in the ground. But God, of course, wasn't fooled by that. And he looks at Cain and he says, Your brother's blood cries out to me from the earth. Which is from the book of Genesis. Now, of course, this myth isn't right. It isn't true that the earth never was crystal clear. We know that. But there is a spiritual sense in which it is true. Because all of creation is meant to be, in a way, transparent to God's presence in it. All of creation is meant to serve as a means of communication with God, as a way of getting to know about God. We're meant to look at the creation, the earth, the world, all the people in it, all the animals, all the beauty in creation, and see that beauty not for its own sake, but as a sign of God's presence in His creation, of God's love and God's care for us. Creation is meant to be a means of communicating with God, and that means that just like any good way of communicating, it has to be transparent. What, what does that mean? When I'm, if I'm talking to you, and I'm having a conversation with you, and you get so tripped up on the words I'm using that you don't really understand my message. You're thinking, what are these, Father is using these words that I don't know, what is, he, what is he talking about? Then I'm not communicating with you in a way that's transparent. Because you're focusing so hard on trying to figure out what the words mean, that you're not getting the message. Creation is meant to be a transparent means of communicating with God. And what that means is that when we look at our brothers, and our sisters, when we look at our fellow human beings, we're meant to see Christ's presence in them. We're meant to see our Lord who dwells in them. We're meant to see the image of God in that person. And not the service level imperfections that we tend to focus on so much. But what happened is, through our sin, and through mankind's fall, creation has lost that transparency. Creation has lost that ability to be a means of communication with God. And instead, what we do is we focus so much on the surface level of things. We focus on, oh, I don't like my brother's haircut today. Oh, I don't like the weather today. It's too hot today. We focus so much on the surface level that we have forgotten about our Lord's presence in every single atom of His creation. In our Gospel reading today, we heard about two men who were blind. And they come to our Lord and they ask Him for healing. Just as those men we're physically blind. Many of us today are spiritually blind because we've lost that vision of our Lord 
in our brothers and in our sisters and throughout all creation. What do we do to regain our spiritual vision? But we have to look at what our epistle reading today said. The epistle reading today had a line in it that I'm sure most of you are very familiar with. If you've ever been to an Orthodox baptism, you will have heard this line many times. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. What does this mean? It means that as Christians, we are no longer what we used to be, but we have been remade. We are something new in Christ. And the epistle reading later talks about how there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, but all are one in Christ Jesus. And I found a very interesting quote from St. John Chrysostom, not surprising, often St. John Chrysostom is the one being quoted. And he says this, If Christ is the Son of God, and you have put on Christ, you who have the Son within you, and are fashioned after his pattern, he means made in the image of God there, you have been brought into one kindred and nature with him. One kindred and one nature. What does that mean? It means that just as Christ came down and took on our human nature, He did that so that we could partake of His divine nature. So that we could follow after Him and become like Him. And St. John Chrysostom goes on and says, He who was a Greek or a Jew or a bondman yesterday carries about with Him the form not of an angel or an archangel, but the Lord of all. He actually displays within his own person the Christ. What does this mean that St. John Chrysostom is saying? He's saying that as a Christian, it doesn't matter what you were before. Yesterday, maybe you were a Greek or an Italian or whatever it might have been. Yesterday, you might have been this kind of person. Today you are a Christian. Today people look at you and they see not, here's a person of this kind, here's a person of that kind. They say, this is what Christ is like. People are looking to us for that example of what it means to live a Christian life. We have put on Christ in our baptism. And we are either going to allow Christ's presence that's inside of us to shine forth and be a beacon of hope for all mankind, or we're going to give people the wrong impression of what it means to be a Christian. Now, if you have put on Christ, if you have been remade in the image and the likeness of Christ, then you also are called to become a transparent sign of God's presence in the earth. You look at the lives of the saints, for example. You look at them and you say, there's something very different about the way this person lived. There's something very important about this person. This person is, in a way, a revelation of God's presence in the world. The saints were those people who through their life of prayer, through their holiness, through their acceptance of God's grace, were able to regain that transparency to God's presence. So that people look at them and they don't see, here's Parascapi, here's Nicholas, here's George, but they see, here is an example of Christ. Here is an example of what it means to be a Christian. They become signs of God's presence in creation, not signs of their own personality, their own idiosyncrasies, but means of revealing God to us. And so when we look into our own hearts, when we look into our own lives, when we look at the very depth of who we are as human beings, and we're able to see that the Lord who created the heavens and the earth 
dwells in our own heart. That's how we get our spiritual vision back. That's how we begin to see the presence of Christ in our neighbor, in our brother, in our sister, in the people who we dislike, the people that we do not get along with. We become reminded of God's presence in creation when we remind ourselves of God's presence within our own heart. When we become aware again of God's presence inside of us. Imagine that you were building a house. And let's say you wanted to put a window up in the house. And let's say you hired somebody, because you know I'm not good at windows. So you hire somebody, and they come and they're putting the, this new window up in the house. And you're standing inside the house, and the worker is standing on the outside of the house, putting the window up. If you're standing in front of that window, and you're looking at its surface, and you're saying, are there any smudges on this window? Are there any cracks on this window? Is there any dirt on this window? Then that window for you has failed to do what windows are supposed to do, because windows are supposed to reveal not themselves, but what's on the other side of them. A window is only acting as a window if you're looking through it, not if you're focusing on whatever imperfections there are on the surface of it. And so in order for us to become aware once again, to remind ourselves of God's presence in this creation, in our brother, in our sister, that we have to have that shift of focus to not focus on the surface of things, but to look through the surface to see the spiritual reality that is behind them, the reality of Christ's presence throughout his creation. As many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now look again at the blind men who came to Jesus for healing, and we'll get the answer to how we can make that shift. Because what do the blind men say? They see Jesus from a distance, and they say, Son of David, have mercy on me. They see Jesus passing by, they see that he is present, and so they call out to him for mercy. And so for us too, since we know that our Lord is dwelling in our hearts, the way to make ourselves whole again, the way to regain that spiritual vision, is to go into that place where we know his presence is, and just like those blind men, to call out to him, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of God, have mercy on me. And our Lord hears our prayer. Our Lord hears our request for mercy. And he answers as he always does with his grace and with his healing. And that's how we become aware once again of our Lord's presence in us. And when we realize that, then we realize our Lord's presence in our brother, in our sister, in all of creation. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Amen.